Well, hi there. I can't tell you how many times I've had to memorize the steps of the scientific method. Make an observation, ask a question, do some research, construct a hypothesis, test your hypothesis, analyze your results, draw a conclusion. I can also tell you that as a scientist, I very rarely think about the scientific method in this way. As you probably know from our earlier video about why I accept science but I don't believe it, science is a model of reality that makes accurate predictions about reality. It is also the methodology used to determine if the predictions made by a model are accurate or not. The thing about models is that all models are wrong, but some models are useful. If a model doesn't make any predictions about reality, then it isn't very useful. Also, if it makes inaccurate predictions about reality, it isn't very useful. So science is all about creating a possible model to explain something unexplained or poorly explained that makes predictions about that thing. And then to test the model to see if the predictions are accurate or not. For example, I might notice that there are two ways that I could drive to school each day. One path is longer than the other. But I seem to get to school faster when I take the longer path. Why would this be? To avoid wasting my time testing highly unlikely explanations, I will find out as much as I can about these roads. By doing this, I learn that both roads have the same speed limit, but the short path has more stoplights than does the long path. And this might lead me to hypothesize that the longer path will be faster because I don't spend as much time at the stoplights. At this point, I could design an experiment where I make this drive many times using each route. I will try to keep the time of day, day of the week, type of car that I'm driving, and as many other factors constant as I can. I don't want my results to be because I did one drive during rush hour and the other at 2 in the morning. I will do it multiple times so that I can be more confident that my results are not due to some unusual occurrence, but rather reflect a consistent pattern of events. I will keep track of how long the drive takes and how much time I spend at the stoplights. If I find that the longer path is not the faster of the two, or that I do not spend more time at stoplights on the shorter path, then my hypothesis will be falsified, meaning it makes inaccurate predictions. However, if the longer path is faster, and I do spend, on average, less time at stoplights, then my hypothesis will be supported. That doesn't mean it is correct. There may be a lot more to it. But so far, my hypothesized explanation makes accurate predictions. My model is useful. At the end of the day, I did all of these things. I made an observation. I seemed to get to school faster taking the long road. I asked a question. Do I really get there faster on the long road? Why? I did some research. The speed limits were the same, but the short road had more stoplights. I constructed a hypothesis based upon my research. Notice that my hypothesis wasn't simply that the long road would be faster. That is a prediction. But that it would be faster because I spend more time at stoplights. That is an explanation. And hypotheses are explanations for phenomena. I tested my hypothesis by doing an experiment that would show if my predictions were accurate or not. I analyzed my results. Was it really faster? Did I actually spend more time at stoplights? I drew a conclusion. The predictions were either accurate or they were not. If they were accurate, then my hypothesis has some merit. It is supported by my experiment. If not, then I throw it out. I have no use for models that make inaccurate predictions. And I start again. The reality is that you've probably been following these steps all the time when you have questions without even thinking about them. And now you know. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon.